when talking about werewolf movies, the first two that usually come to mind are American Werewolf in London and The Howling. But I think one werewolf movie that's probably just as important, especially for the, the millennium horror era, is Dog Soldiers, directed by Neil Marshall. So looking forward to diving deep into this one. Let's go. Dog Soldiers stars Kevin McKidd, Emma Cleesby, Sean Pertwee, and is directed by Neil Marshall. What's up, guys? It's time for a patron request. This is a review for Robert Bradley. And uh, this is a, a movie that's near and dear to him because it's the, like, one of the first movies he saw in the cinema with his mother. And uh, his mother's a big horror fan. And she got some bad news recently from the doctor. And so uh, I wanted to dedicate this review to him and his mother. So, Robert, this one is for you. But I'm going to say this right off the bat, too, before we jump deep into this. Neil Marshall had an era there where he was quickly becoming one of my favorite directors, you know, because he did this movie. Then he did The Descent, which is one of my all-time favorite horror films. Then he did Doomsday, which is a complete love letter to Escape from New York that I love, starring Rona Mitra, which I'm going to review that one, too, eventually. But Dog Soldiers was a hell of a start, actually. It's a fun werewolf movie. And I love it, too, because it's, you can tell it's low budget, and it's all practical effects. So, anyway, first off, quick plot synopsis. Uh, you have this exercise, this military exercise going on, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because it relates to me when I was in the military after the synopsis. But uh, you have this main character, Cooper, and uh, him and this other group, they're in the middle of this exercise. And then they come upon this character, Captain Ryan, uh, who had been uh, attacked by one of the werewolves. And he warns them about this, but he is definitely kind of holding some, some things close to the vest. He's that character that you don't know if you can quite trust, like maybe there's something in it for him. So they don't really trust him along the way. But then, like in the middle of the movie, they're just uh, in the midst of this freaking attack by this clan of werewolves this pack of werewolves and so they end up getting holed up in this house with this character megan and throughout the rest of the movie they're just fighting for their lives it's intense as hell and these werewolves are they're huge they look like they're probably eight feet tall because every time they come through the door you know they, they have to like duck and these might be some of the scariest werewolves out there now first off i want to talk about that whole military exercise type deal because when I was in the military, we would do exercises quite often, at least once a year. And what I mean by an exercise uh, is you would go out into the forest or into the woods. You would literally eat MREs, which are ready to eat meals is what they're called. Everybody has their favorites. If you're, you've been in the military, you know what I'm talking about. I think mine was a chicken noodle. But you just have to go through these different scenarios when you were in these exercises. You know, you would play like you were under attack all this different stuff and it's really just to prepare you for war prepare you to be ready way back in the day when i first came in the military i always thought wouldn't it be cool if they did a horror movie based around this around this military exercise idea and in my mind i was thinking wouldn't it be cool if there was like a slasher movie and you had somebody going around really killing people not necessarily with a gun, but like maybe with a knife or just different weapons or something like that. Throughout the movie, you don't know who's doing the killing. That was kind of an idea that I always had in my head. I, I wish I would have written it down. But so it's kind of refreshing to see a movie like this that uses that premise, uh, but they just put werewolves in it. And I'd like to timestamp that just in case somebody does make a slasher involved in a uh, military exercise environment. Now, one thing that's interesting about Dog Soldiers is it's almost the opposite of what The Descent is. The Descent is pretty much all women in that movie. There is one guy in the movie at the beginning, but uh, it's mostly women. This is the opposite of that. It's all men, except there's one woman. And I don't know if that was intentional by Neil Marshall when he eventually wrote The Descent. Like, hey, I did Dog Soldiers with all men. I'll do this one with all women. I don't know if that was part of his thought process or not, but... Uh, it definitely brings about some curiosity. I do like movies like that that focus on just one gender, uh, like The Thing, you know, where it's just men. And uh, maybe that's why The Thing and The Descent are two of my favorite horror films. That just adds another interesting tidbit to the plot. 
But also, I think sometimes uh, a low budget can benefit a movie. And this is the perfect example of that because as you're watching it, you can tell it's low budget. It looks like it's filmed in 16 millimeter. I'm not sure if it was, but I think it was. It just has that grainy nature to it. And I know Neil Marshall has stated that uh, a, a proper Blu-ray transfer was almost not in the cards because they had trouble finding the, the master, the print of the movie, uh, because it wasn't like in a warehouse or anything. But luckily, uh, I think Pathos Studios actually had like two prints of the movie. So they were able to eventually put it out on Blu-ray. I don't have the Shout Factory release, but I have the regular release, but I've heard the Shout Factory release doesn't have the better transfer. It's actually the original version. And uh, I'm noticing that too with Shout Factory Blu-rays. I love all the great stuff they put into these uh, releases and they do have decent transfers, but I often do prefer the original transfer compared to the Shout Factory transfer. But you know, going back to the movie, the, the low budget nature of it makes it grittier you know, I'm comparing it to like like Predator. Predator had a really gritty feel to it. That's what Dog Soldiers has. Especially that scene in the middle of the movie where they're in the middle of this like fight with all the, the werewolves in the woods. I love the way that that scene, and really this whole movie is filmed. It's all handheld for the most part. And you can tell that a lot of what makes this movie great was done in post, was done in the editing room because there's quite a few sequences in here where there are really quick cuts here and there. And, uh, you know, I've complained about quick cut movies uh, in the past, but this is a case where it works. You know, I guess it depends on your environment. It depends on your plot. But this particular movie, it really works. And if you were just to set the camera in front of one of these werewolves, eventually the, the realness of them starts to bleed away a little bit. But if you only show little glimpses of them here and there, some of the shadows, uh, don't keep the frame on them for too long, then you know it keeps you invested in what's going on and the, the werewolves are real enough. And creature design wise, I like the way these werewolves look actually. They actually brought in dancers to uh, act the part instead of uh, actual stuntmen. And they've done that in the past in other films too. A great example is the Tar Man from uh, Return of the Living Dead. That's not a stuntman, that's actually an actor. And that's why Tar Man is one of the most popular zombies ever. And I think that's why these werewolves work so well. Also, this works too because you have great freaking characters in this movie, you know, especially like Cooper and Ryan and Spoon and just the, the chaos of the situation. When you have great actors to play off of that, then it makes for a, a compelling story. And you can tell, like, they're, when they're holed up in the house, there's a lot of chaos going on. There's one time where they're, like, trying to run from the house to get this vehicle, and it explodes. And everybody's really just kind of freaking out throughout this movie. I was getting a lot of vibes from the theme, actually, as far as, like, paranoia and building chaos. And to me, I think that's kind of the star of the movie. Yeah, the, the werewolves are cool and all, but really, I think it's a great character focus as well. These are military trained people and now they are really in the thick of it. Um, I don't remember if they had actually been in a combat environment uh, before all these exercises, but this was their actual combat environment and it just happens to be with fucking werewolves. How's that for a trial by fire? Now going forward, I'm going to talk a little bit of spoilery type stuff. I mean, this is an older movie. I always talk spoilers, but I always like to give you at least a, a little bit of a warning. Uh, and because we're going to be talking about the character Megan. And uh, it, it's a nice little bait and switch because I always thought Megan was, you know, just this very interested person that actually lives out in the wild and she studies these creatures. Eventually, we find out by the end of the movie that she is actually one of them. You know, I think she was turned sometime along the way. And, and it's just an interesting ending, too, because they spend this whole time building her character there's this chemistry between her and Cooper throughout the movie. And then she just ends up dying, like right at the end of the movie. You know, and it was just, and it wasn't like in this emotional, uh, glorious fashion. I guess maybe it was kind of glorious. I mean, it, 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 she definitely went out with a bang because they blew the place up. Uh, but I found her pretty interesting throughout the movie because I was always like trying to figure out who is Megan? Is there something that they're hiding from us here? You know, could she be a werewolf? But when she's finally revealed to be a werewolf, 
I like the way that Neil Marshall approached it, you know? It wasn't this huge buildup that, boom, she's a werewolf and you're shocked. No, it was just kind of there. Uh, and, but I, again, I liked how he handled this situation because I think it was one of those twists where the audience probably wouldn't be that shocked if she was a werewolf. Given the chaos of the situation, anything's possible. And also, Elephant in the Room, if you've seen this movie, it does feel like a big homage to Evil Dead. You know, because they're holed up in this house, which is kind of like a cabin. They're in the middle of the woods. The point of view of the werewolves uh, is, you know, gray because they're seeing like dogs see. But the camera is moving very swiftly through the woods, very much like Evil Dead, you know? You can tell that Neil Marshall was highly influenced by Evil Dead. So many movies are influenced by Evil Dead, especially the, the uh, camera techniques that Sam Raimi would use. Uh, still to this day, I still think they, they use it from time to time. And I think a lot of young filmmakers, when they're first starting out, it's irresistible. They can't help but try that fast moving camera technique through the woods like Sam Raimi would do. You know, th throw a couple two by fours on a skateboard, put a camera on there and you know, have at it, go to town. I remember one time, and I wish I had the footage, I was working at the, the Habitat for Humanity Restore, I was the manager there, and we had this bicycle, and I put a camera, I mounted a camera like on the front of the bicycle, and it was a big warehouse, so you could like drive in a circle, and I would ride the bicycle around the circle, and it was kind of like an Evil Dead effect, and it looked really cool, and I actually showed like this uh, coworker, you know, hey, check this out, and she was like, how in the hell did you do that, you know? That's, that's how, that, that shot looks like a million bucks. And I did it with a freaking iPhone. But Dog Soldiers, definitely a freaking purchase worthy. This is a fun ass movie actually. I, I dug the hell out of it. And uh, it's one that I, I frequent quite often. It, it's, you know, if I have to do like a, a werewolf triple feature, Dog Soldiers is definitely in there and you know the other two. So anyway guys, let me know your thoughts on Dog Soldiers in the comments, looking forward to hearing them. Also, go to buymeacoffee.com slash drumdums and buy me a coffee. It's a, it's a great little tip jar type of way to support me if you don't want to do the month-to-month -month Patreon thing. Uh, if you go to the Drum Dums main page at the right where you see my socials and all that, you'll see a little buy me a coffee icon that you can click on and it'll take you right there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and drum them out.